On Journal 90.3 WPLN, Nashville Public Radio. Thanks, Bill. Third-generation guitar and stringed instrument maker Manuel Delgado moved recently from East Los Angeles to East Nashville. The last time the Delgado Guitar Company uprooted this significantly was when Manuel's grandfather and great-uncle moved from Juarez, Mexico to the U.S. in the 1940s. He's a one-man operation, but there's something from those patriarchs in every instrument Manuel Delgado builds, as WPLN's Craig Havikhurst reports. Just to give you a little sample. In a spare room studio of his house, Manuel Delgado demonstrates a traditional Mexican instrument called a requinto jarocho. It looks like a small body acoustic guitar with a particularly long svelte body and just four strings rather than six. It was built by his father decades ago. And the pick is very long, almost uh, the length, I guess you'd say probably about four and a half inches and about maybe about a half an inch wide and it's made from bullhorn. So we literally cut it out and then shave it down and give it a thin tip at the end so it has that slapping at the end of it. Whether you're into Mexican music or not, you've probably heard this instrument before. There in the breakdown of Los Lobos' monster hit La Bamba is a Delgado, Requinto Jarocho. The band became Delgado customers when they were still in high school, shopping and hanging out at Candelas Guitars on Cesar Chavez Avenue in Los Angeles. That's where Manuel grew up, and where his family also built instruments for classical guitar legends Andres Segovia and the Romeros, as well as folk and popular artists like Arlo Guthrie and Jose Feliciano. Today, Manuel Delgado surrounds himself with reminders of a family tradition that goes back to 1928. So I have little hidden treasures all over the house, stuff made by my great uncle, by my grandfather, by my dad. I have an instrument my grandfather made in the 30s. The oldest instruments uh, I have are the first one I made when I was 12, and then I have a classical guitar I made when I was 18. And it's hard, I want to keep all of them, but <laughs> I gotta, gotta make a living. He does so out of the garage behind his house. And I have a long commute to work, as you can see. <laughs> Come on. You don't need a lot of room when you do everything by hand. So, you know, I have a bandsaw because I'll buy the wood and board feet. As you can see, there's Honduras mahogany and Sitka spruce up there. Babinga, which is African rosewood, Mexican rosewood known as Palo Escrito. You know, so there's all kinds of different species in here. <laughs> the shop, with an Andres Segovia CD playing softly in the background, smells of sawdust and glue. It's only been set up since February and is still being broken in. Delgado moved to Nashville last year with his wife, Julie. She wanted to further her songwriting career. Manuel made the difficult decision to leave the operation his family had had in Los Angeles for more than 50 years. It was really about me supporting her and wanting her to go after her dream. And I feel like in return, God has kind of, kind of blessed me because I went from having the storefront and selling strings and doing the picks and all that thing, going back to what I love, which is just the building. Delgado chisels down the spruce bracing on the back of what will be a flamenco guitar. Manuel says classical and flamenco instruments are his specialty, but he will build almost any stringed instrument one can imagine. When he arrived in Tennessee, he built his first banjo and his first square neck resonator guitar, similar to a dobro. Variety is one way Delgado lives his philosophy, that every instrument is as unique as the person who plays it. If you were to come to me and say, hey, I really like this particular model, build it for me, it wouldn't be the same thing because I'd be building it for you. So I'm gonna wanna know things about you. I wanna know um, where you're from, uh, what your likes are, um, things like colors. If you're a person that likes the mountains, I'm gonna um, use earth tones on the inlays. If you're somebody who likes the ocean, maybe I'll use abalone shell and blues and yellows, different colors that will kind of uh, bring you closer to the places that you love. Because aside from the tone and the sound, which I think is the most important thing, it's got to be a custom-built instrument to where you feel like it's an extension of you. Delgado says his apprenticeship in his family business shaped him as surely as he shapes his instruments. For one thing, he prefers traditional woodworking methods to the precision cutting and sanding technologies available to guitar builders today. He often uses homemade knives, and he says that he could build guitars even if the electricity went out. But Delgado is also apt to say that the philosophy behind the craft applies far beyond the workbench. My dad always told me, start with the end in mind. 
I need to know what I'm building before I start building it. I think he was te he I know, I don't think. I know he was teaching me life lessons when he was teaching me how to build. So it wasn't just about building guitars, it was about being a good human being. For Nashville Public Radio, I'm Craig Havikhurst. You can listen to, read, or receive a podcast of stories produced by Nashville Public Radio News by visiting our website, WPLN.org, and clicking on News at the top of the page. Mostly cloudy skies with a high in the upper 40s today, partly cloudy.